what does Uganda Agri Business Alliance do? We actually look at the policies in agribusiness, understand them, analyze them, see if there is a missing gap, and then we talk to the private sector, we talk to government, and see if there is a policy, but it has not been disseminated. We, we as, as the UAA, organize those talks I was talking about in order to disseminate the policy. If it is not there, like when we started, we were very concerned about Uganda, an agriculture country, not having an um, agriculture financing policy. So when we went to, to MAIF, Minister of Agriculture, we were told on S. Victoria, as you can see, that goes, that goes to finance. When we went to finance, that means of finance is like Victoria, that is agriculture. So we are like, that, this is a gap. You can't be an agriculture country without a clear agriculture finance policy. So a lot of work was done. Most of those, uh, you hear that the, the financing of agriculture, the whatever, uh, to a certain extent, a result of the noise we were making. The second thing we do as Uganda Agribusiness Alliance is advocate for agribusiness. But let me first of all uh, 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 define what is agribusiness. For us at Uganda Agribusiness Alliance, we look at anything to do with farming or farming-related commerce, farming-related commerce, that is agribusiness. So if you are, you are doing anything which at the end of the day will result in either food, fiber, fuel, or forest. I'll repeat, forest, fiber, food, or fuel. That is agribusiness. And it is large because if, for example, you are making uh, caterpillars, those huge, huge ones, which are supposed to move the trees after we have cut down the forest, you are in, agri agri in agribusiness. If you are making tractors, or if, for example, you are in the village, and your job, you are the expert loader of cattle. Your job, whenever I'm selling my cattle, you come in at uh, 3 a.m., you load 100 cattle, I pay you your money that night, and you go. You are part of agribusiness. And to me, it is very important that Ugandans understand this. Because quite often, when some people are busy castigating young people that they don't work, it depends how you define work. Because honestly, if this young man has spent the whole night either loading matoke in Kabohe or loading kato in uh, Zimbabwe, you wake up at 6 o'clock, you uh, go 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock, you go and dig maybe for two hours, you come back, two hours. He has been working for maybe, the young man worked for three hours or six hours loading cattle. For you, have worked for three hours in your garden. But because you have seen him seated on the veranda, you are like, those young men don't work. They, they spend their time baiting. What money do they use to bait? So sometimes I feel like telling people, maybe if you minded your own business. Second, if you, instead of complaining about these youths, if you put more energy into your work, Uganda would be better off. Anyway, why am I talking about the youth? Because if you are advocating for agriculture and agribusiness, the largest consumer society in Uganda are the youth. So if we are going to feed them, we have got to know where they are, what they are doing, and what they want. Because in agribusiness, whatever we do, we will be affected by two things, either the environmental changes or the demand and supply of the consumer. So for the environment, it's a different thing, because we, we handle it differently. But for the consumer, this youth, because if your population is 70% or 80% youth, those are your consumers. So the demand and supply, their eating habits, because like uh, one of the best things that ever happened to agriculture is when the youths started making Rolex. Because you, you, there were no old women making Rolex. That was a youth thing, and the, youth, uh, the makers were youth, and the consumers were youth. Every old and young woman who was looking after chicken was the happiest because there was a market for eggs. The one thing which makes Uganda Green Business Alliance happy is that uh, these days nearly every media house talks about agriculture or agribusiness. Secondly, we, I love the fact that Ugandans have demystified agribusiness, that now people are proud to be farmers. Because previously, somebody would say, I'm just a farmer. 
Now, one, people are proud to be farmers. Two, I now know that nearly every Ugandan has a back, a back, a, a, a back kitchen garden. And along those lines, let me share this with Ugandans. So I've got a friend who was the head of the Kenya flowers exporters. And one time, Kenya was having issues with Britain because they were saying that um, they, they fly the flowers, so they are causing too much carbon. And uh, so they should not uh, export their flowers to Britain, especially if Waitrose, the company which belongs to the king of England now, is buying. And the Kenyan said no. Under the circumstances, we are allowed a certain amount of carbon, but we have not even used 0.0% of our carbon. So you cannot blame us for that. If anything, we should be labeled green. Somehow, the king had to, to, uh, to, to hear, heard about this, uh, this argument, and he decided that he was going to meet the flower exporters himself. So he invited them to dinner. But the part you, you should be interested in is when they arrived, just like I do at my home, the king took them for a, a, a visit, an inspection of his kitchen garden. He showed them, you see those carrots, that's what you are having for dinner, the potatoes, the, 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 the green onions, everything has been harvested from the, my garden. So, to you, my fellow Uganda, if the king of England, the king you know, that the son of the queen, can have a kitchen garden and can actually work in the kitchen garden, what about you and I? Anyway, having said that, as far as Uganda Green Business Alliance is concerned, we are very happy that uh, we now have all sorts of financing going into agribusiness. We are also very happy that we contributed to the youths. At first, they were just talking about uh, agribusiness, but now the youths are proudly practicing agribusiness. Then uh, we are also very happy that Parliament has prioritized agribusiness, sorry, agriculture, and that the president, even now and then, has special programs just talking about agribusiness. You really, you can't be more successful than that. So what challenges have we had in this work? Of course, the most, there are two challenges in, uh, in, agri, in, uh, in agribusiness or promoting agribusiness. The first one is the environment, like the, the rain, the, 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 the sunshine and all that. Unfortunately, this is a challenge nobody can do anything about. But so what, what does the UAA do? We partner with those partners whose job it is to keep talking about the environment, partners like Umoja who are now uh, tree planting. Because when, uh, for example, there is too much sunshine like there was last week, and you tell people plant trees, they ask when would they grow? That tree which you are sitting under, who planted it? And did he ask when it will grow? So the environment is a big challenge, which is everybody's problem. But two, the changing eating consumer habits. For the changing consumer habits, sorry, because of the consumer eating habits, Uganda Agribusiness Alliance work can never be done and you finish. You have to be at it all the time. How do you do it? You do it by uh, making sure that Uganda, being an agriculture country, looks at agribusiness, value, agribusiness as a value chain, which is linked from one link to the other to the other. If, for example, you look at that chart and you see where the farmer is at the top and the consumer is at the bottom, on the sides, on, on both sides, you have got those either the people who provide the information or the equipment, or the money. And then you also have all those people who are part of the chain who, for example, make sure that, uh, if let's say we, we talk about uh, Matoke, if you're in Kabohe, you need that farmer who has actually made up his mind to grow the, 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 the banana plantation in Kabohe. That person has got to make sure that if he promised to harvest his bananas on Monday for delivery to Kampala on Tuesday, that the people who harvest are there. Now, if for some reason maybe he didn't pay, and then the people, the, the people who cut the matoke for him do not turn up, that means the lorry will come to Kabohe and there will be no matoke. And then he has to pay for that money. Then, uh, if, uh, because the matoke was not cut, 
the lorry became empty and the farmer has to pay because he, he, uh, he did not load. The stall, the wholesaler in a, in a, in a Kasero market who buys his matoke will not he, he get his supply. And God forbid if that person is supposed to supply the vendors who make katogo, katogo for the border borders, the border borders eat at 6.30. You can see how, how terrible that can be. So what we at Uganda Group Business Alliance are looking at in the future is for Uganda government, this is government, to make sure that when they look at the agriculture sector, and I'm talking about the farming and farm-related uh, activities which are commercial, they do their part. For example, what part? Make sure that all our roads work. Because you can imagine, I've, I've spent two years growing my matoke, I load them on a lorry, and the bridge is not there, and matoke is quite perishable, and once again, those people will not get their food. So, for the future, we would like to see a country which has accepted that we are an agribusiness country, we are interlinked, and every link delivers. Then, uh, so what do, I, what do I want the public to do? I just want to request everybody that we prevail upon the powers that are to make sure that everybody, every child goes to school. Why? Currently, we have got 9 million people who cannot read and write. And unfortunately for us in agribusiness, all of those are offloaded into our sector. Now, when the president stands up and says, uh, you have got to do HVL, Baba, president, how do you do HVL when you cannot add? You cannot, I, t I give you three chicken to sell, and somebody is saying, oh, maybe I'll give you 30,000 for each, and you had wanted 31,000. 30, you cannot quickly say, oh, no, 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 my profit is only 3,000 and whatever. So, education of everybody is paramount. That is one. Then two. Forget all this which is going on, the PDM, the whatever, the whatever, and just organize Ugandans into groups. Don't force them into cooperatives, but uh, get them to understand that for as long as you are part of a value chain, you are home and dry. Let's say if you are growing, uh, you are growing tomatoes. There's a young man, my, my relative or my friend, he makes, he makes boxes. So when I visited him and I looked at them, I asked, what is this? He said, we, so, so to it a ply. And I'm like, you, what is it? Those are called ply. They're like, what is ply? Oh, those are the special boxes for carrying tomatoes. Now, if you have got, uh, if you have got a young person in your place and he's doing whatever he's doing, the minimum we expect you to do is introduce him to the value chain. Because this ply man, is a very important uh, part of the value chain of tomatoes. So the person who sells them the agrochemicals, they have got to be the right chemicals. Two, this person who is selling the agrochemicals should know what they do, how they, they are supposed to be applied, and when we are supposed to stop applying them. Because what happens is, those illiterates who have told you, those who can't read and write, they got to buy this, uh, whatever, they, how they pronounce it is up to them. And somehow the seller has no idea how it is applied. Because when you pretend and go to these shops and you ask, you see, I told you I've got the aphids and I've got the, the, the fungi, that somebody will say, oh, the, they, it works on everything. We do not have those chemicals which kill everything. Otherwise, even the, the tomato would be dead. So government, make sure that everybody is part of a value chain. Education, value chain. And finally, I would love to thank both my partners and those of you AA. As far as I'm concerned, my biggest partner, of course, is my God. But I thank my father, because I remember when I was in politics, he was my political manager. And, you know, for you people in politics, you don't know what it is to have a manager who you trust 100%, if anything, 1,000%. Once my father was there, I was done. And actually, part of the reason I left politics, he was becoming a bit weak, and I'm like, no, I can't do this alone. So I thank my, my parents. Secondly, I want to thank the media houses, specifically UBC, because most of this information, we, many people have it, but nobody knows about it. Thirdly, I want to thank all those uh, partners who have either technically patterned with us, meaning they have, done, um, <clears throat> they have done the technical work, because at Uganda Agribusiness Alliance, our job is to understand and advocate, but our partners actually do the work funded by other partners. Partners like Small Foundation, Oxfam, SNV, uh, USAID, 
all of those who have funded us, we thank you. Finally, and most importantly, we thank the partners who do the real production. Like right now, we are working with Golden Pumpkin. These are the ones promoting the production of pumpkin. If anybody is looking for a new cash crop, which takes only four to five months to, to, to go to the market, try pumpkin. Talk to Golden Pumpkin, you'll be home and dry. We also want to thank the people of West Nile. This is a special thank you to you. For the longest time, onions eaten in West Nile were coming from Sebei, Capturer, all the way to West Nile. But when we spoke to West Nile, because I told you our job is to look, see, and advocate, when we, we went to West Nile advocating for onion production, a number of West Nile farmers have joined onion production. They've just had their first harvest, and oh, am I proud of them. In conclusion, I want to call upon every Ugandan to utilize whatever talent God gave you. For me, God made me a farmer's daughter and also gave me a mouth to talk. For you, I don't know what your talent is. Find a way of developing it and enjoying it. Thank you and goodbye.